Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. We're talking about the uh, recap for Center Hill Lake. This is the uh, third stop on the Music City Division BFLs. So basically we're trying to get to the Lake Eufaula Regional in October. So we're fishing the Music City Division and from the Regional you can qualify for the All-Americans. So we're trying to get back to the All-American. That's the number one goal. Third stop on the Music City Division is the Center Hill BFL. I've never been to the lake. First time seeing the lake. Um, that's always that's always fun, but it's always nerve-wracking to um, fish a new body of water and be fishing against a hundred or so locals that know this lake as well as the back of their hand. So we're trying to learn as much. We got two days of practice. I had probably one of the best practices I've ever had in a tournament. And it was it was unbelievable. It's almost like you could call your shots everywhere you went. Um, you could catch fish. It didn't end up turning out to be the best of tournaments, and uh, I'll talk to you about that here in a second. But um, in practice, basically, the lake sets up a lot like Cumberland, which I've only fished Cumberland a couple times, but I like Cumberland. Cumberland sets up the way I like to fish. Um, I think, from what I know, they they basically drained the lake years ago to fix the dam and it caused a bunch of trees to grow up along the bank and so the banks kind of littered with all these saplings and and uh, trees that are probably I don't know maybe two or three inches in diameter just all around the bank and in all the shallower areas whether it's a point whether it's a it, backs of the pockets anywhere and these fish were I don't know if they were spot if they were spawning on the points or on those on those trees and saplings or if they were just set up on there staging or just got done spawning. I'm not sure, but anywhere you went to that had those trees seemed like especially if it was on a point, it seemed like you could catch fish. And there was I mean I've I've caught so many fish in that in that practice and and I even shook off a lot of fish the the video doesn't show all the fish that I shook off because that's kind of boring to watch but it was just it was just an unbelievable practice I thought I'll be able to catch a limit in no time and then just a matter of catching bigger fish so that's kind of what I did in the tournament I just went down the bank and was was flipping and actually the second day of practice I actually got on a topwater bite with uh, with a spook and so basically those same areas around those trees in practice they were they were eating a spook pretty good and that kind of got me excited because it's always fun I think every I don't think I know a person that doesn't like catching a fish on top water so um, that's how I decided to start my tournament was to run down towards the dam and kind of stick in one general area rather than running around the lake the whole time and I was gonna throw a topwater bait around some bushes and trees that had grown up when they uh, redid the dam. And then if that doesn't work, or later in the day, whenever it gets calmer and sunnier, I was going to flip either a tube or a, uh, or a brush hog. So that was the game plan and uh, ended up, tournament started. We actually had an hour and 45 minutes to a two hour fog delay. So that kind of messes up the top water bite a little bit, I thought, I don't know. Um, it, it just it, it makes you focus more on timing so like all your time kind of gets crunched down into a little bit and um, so you're kind of thinking about that constantly you're kind of thinking like it's a ticking clock and and it kind of messes with your head a little bit so anyway I fished I fished top water a little bit but I never got a bite and so I kind of abandoned that and I went flipping so when I go flipping I'm throwing a uh, quarter ounce Texas rig with a brush hog and a uh, Gamagatsu uh, heavy cover flipping hook. And I tie a Schnell, Schnell knot on that and throw it on 20 pound Berkeley fluorocarbon. A lot of the, the little cuts that I was going into ended up having a lot, lot more smallmouth than I thought they did. And the smallmouth requires an 18 inch size limit. So I was. In the morning I was catching a lot of smallmouth and it was kind of frustrating because obviously I couldn't keep them. Caught one largemouth and then I flipped a lot of good banks 
I also went to the bent or to fish laydowns with a jerk bait. I ended up fishing a bluff with a Ned rig. I, I, I started scrambling around mostly because we didn't have a whole lot of time with the fog delay and I was really, I was kind of running around frantically for a while and then about one o'clock I pulled into one little cove that I got two or three bites in in practice and I pulled a, uh, I pulled a tube out of, a, out of the rod locker. I start flipping this tube and about 10 yards down the bank I missed the fish and then I missed another fish and finally I hooked up with one and it was a 18 and a quarter inch smallmouth. So I was pretty pumped at that time, but I still only have two fish and it's one o'clock, I'm due in at two o'clock. So it's not looking very good for me, but at this point I'm trying to catch as many keepers as I can. Kind of like Indiana, we just we just go out and try and catch one keeper at a time and, and uh, hope for the best. But uh, so I'm trying to salvage my day and I catch another three pound largemouth. So I was pretty pumped then. And then I get to the end of the bushes and there's one lay down and I pull out my jerk bait, which I had caught a couple really nice fish on jerk baits in, uh, in practice and uh, around lay downs. So I pull out my jerk bait, I twitch it a couple times and I see one on live scope coming after it, end up catching it. About lost all my rods in the process but it was uh it ended up working out the uh fish ended up being three and a half four pounds i ended up weighing uh four fish for um four fish for 10 pounds 11 ounces and i think i ended up 37th out of like 100 boats so wasn't wasn't the best finish but um i was happy with it considering i only have one fish at one o'clock and i was due in at two o'clock so it was, uh, it was definitely a grinder out there for, for me, and um, I know a lot of guys caught a lot of fish, but considering the practice that I had, I was, I was kind of expecting to, um, was kind of expecting to catch them pretty good, and uh, just didn't happen. But that's tournament fishing. I feel like that happens more often than not. I feel like a lot of guys get on some fish in practice and then expect it to, to be good in the tournament, and it just, it just kind of fades away or whatever so you just kind of go got to go with it and uh, do your best to uh, make the best of each day so I moved up to th 23rd in the points top 45 move on to the uh, BFL regional for a uh, chance at the All-Americans so that's that's the ultimate goal and that's what we're fishing the BFLs for so um, hopefully we can uh, make it to the regional and then hopefully we can uh, be successful at the regional so um, if you like my video, be sure to subscribe, check out um, all my other videos. You can check out the video from Center Hill when I caught them uh, in practice or when I caught them in the tournament and see how the tournament actually went. Until next time, we'll see you guys later.